Hey guys, it's JC. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a question that I've been getting a lot, especially from one friend lately, and I've been thinking about it for days. It's the idea that she just looked at me and just said, I'm just out of control. I'm done. Like I'm out of control. And it kind of feels like this speeding freight train that you just can't rein in, that you can't stop when it comes to food, binging, whatever that looks like for you. But I'm guessing you probably know that feeling. I know it so well of watching yourself eat and you just feel out of control. You feel like, you know what? I know I am, but I don't even care. Um, you just giving yourself way to it. Like I, I, it doesn't matter what I do. I can't stop. I don't know what to do. It, it could be a feeling of numbness. Like I'm just numb. I don't even, I don't even care. I'm just eating like I can't. I'm done. It could be a feeling of apathy. It could be a feeling of hopelessness because you have tried so many times, so many diets, and you're just like, no, I can't. No more. I can't do that anymore. I'm done. Do you know that feeling of just being out of control and you know it, but you're just not sure what to do next because you know a diet isn't the path. You know it. I mean, we've all gotten to that point. I got to that point and kind of just gave myself over to it because I thought, well, I'm not doing diets anymore, but I can't obviously stop. <laughs> I can't. I, I have tried too many times, so I'm just going to be in this place and so be it and let the consequences be whatever. So this morning I was in, in the words of Paul, actually, not even thinking about that question when suddenly we, I began to see some patterns and some things that I just thought, you know what? There is an answer for those that feel that way. Um, for any of us that think I'm just out of control and I can't stop. I can't, I don't have the willpower. I can't do it. I don't have the emotional energy to even do this right now. I would just suggest two, two thoughts and they come out of, out of, uh, the new Testament, out of Paul's writings. The first one, if you are in that state is to remember this is primarily a spiritual issue, not a physical issue. I know it feels physical. And yes, if there's some sugar addiction, some actual food addiction involved, yes, there's a body component. And I will put links below. I've talked in other courses about that or classes, excuse me, videos, well, all three, <laughs> about that. Yes, that's very true. The physical part is one part. But deep down, this is a spiritual issue because this is an incredibly difficult thing to overcome. And this is one of those things where we've got to come to the place where we realize through Christ alone or it will never happen. For some of us, I'm not saying that's everybody, but for, for those of us that are mired in addiction or binging or out of control or we know that this freight train is not going to be slowed down by our willpower. It just keeps going and going. This is something that is a spiritual issue and that Christ really is both our expert in this area and also our power by which we can make the changes that we need to. Without him, this change, if we just focus on the physical, this isn't going to happen. So if we make it a spiritual journey, first and foremost. Then we can go into the scriptures and we can actually see verses that apply to out of control binging. I know we, at first we think well, there's nothing in the scriptures about that. Yes, there is. If we see it as a journey of the flesh being out of control and us not having the ability to overcome that on our own, thus we need a savior. We need deliverance. We need the redemption of the one who is an expert of, at this. This is his specialty. Transformation, change, um, empowering us to do what we can't do on our own in our flesh. So the first two verses I thought of then if, if we're answering the question, I'm out of control. What do I do? I don't even know where to start. I was first thinking of Philippians, Philippians 1, 6, that says he that had begun a good work in you will complete it. Like he, he will perform it. You trust him. This is part of the work of you being transformed. He that's begun this will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The second one um, in Philippians was Philippians 2.13. It is God that works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. His workings in us is what will enable us to get out of that apathy, to get that control. Um, it's looking to him. So 
then as I was spinning through different scriptures, I ended up in Ephesians for quite a while. And guys, it was just the answer for me today. Um, the biggest one was Ephesians 4, which again is a passage that doesn't seem to have anything to do with out of control eating. Um, I'm in Ephesians 4 verses 17 through 23, and I'm in the King James, but I'll, I'll use a few other translations. Paul says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of heart. Now listen to this verse, who being past feeling had have given themselves over unto the lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He's talking about those that are just walking as, as the world does, just giving themselves over to it. And a lot of times we think of that, we, we listen to the words like lasciviousness or greediness, and we think, well, I'm not living that way. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't apply. But um, I started going through other translations. I have a couple of apps on my phone where I can look at the same verses and other, other translations. And, and I can't remember which ones. I just wrote down phrases. I can't remember which comes from which translation. But one verse said, who had given themselves over not to lasciviousness, but to sensuality. To sensuality, the senses, pleasing the senses. Don't tell me food doesn't fit that. Yes, sex fits that and other things fit that. But giving ourselves over to sensuality, I'm just going to eat. I don't even care anymore. I'm, I am going to please my senses. We're not saying that with our mouth, but we're, we're, we're living that way, right? When we're out of control, we have given ourselves over to sensuality to just eat what we want. We're coping that way. We're just doing it. It's hard. I know. It's a hard thing to see in ourselves, but... It makes the scripture fit. Um, one other translation, instead of given themselves over, it said, let themselves go. Let themselves go. Man, that fit me. I just let myself go. Like, I can't do anything about this. I'm out of control. I want to binge or I'm going to binge. I just can't deal with it. I don't know what to do. I let myself go. Um, and then the part about to, uh, to work all uncleanness with greediness, that was the other part, you guys. As I began to read different translations, there was one in the Christian Standard Bible that translated that phrase to um, giving themselves over to a desire for more and more. Giving themselves over to a desire for, for more and more. Just that last phrase is from the CSB. Oh my gosh. It doesn't that describe the battle, the out of control battle? It, don't let shame be part of this video. Don't let shame and guilt be part of this video. Let's just let ourselves be honest before the Lord and say, yeah, okay, Ephesians 4 relates to me more than I thought. I have given myself over to a desire for more and more, more chocolate, more and more and more, more whatever, more brownies, more chocolate chip cookie dough, and I'm out of control. This verse does, this whole passage does fit me. And so Paul says that ye have not so learned Christ. Sorry, it's me emotional. The message says, but that's no life for you. You've learned Christ. You know him. That's where the answer begins. If it so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, that old natural side of us, those old behaviors, those old patterns, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Now, again, we look at that and think that's sexual reference, but a lust is just an overpowering craving. That's all lust is. Don't tell me we can't lust for food. And so that old man in us, the, the old natural man has given ourselves over to a it's corrupt according to the deceitful lust and they're deceitful because they promise us that it will fix it. The food promises us that it will fix it. Whatever we're using it for. The boredom or stress or fear or worry or anxiety or whatever we're trying to stuff and fill, whatever hole we're trying to fill. It's deceitful. It's a deceitful lust because the lust that says, just go eat, just go eat. It's deceitful. It won't fix it. It deceives us into believing it's the answer. But he says, that's no life for you. That's the old man that believes that these things will fix it. Christ alone has the power to fill that empty place, to fix that thing that you're trying to stuff more and more. 
and more, that desire for more and more. He alone can fix it in a way that it's fixed. And you don't need more and more and more. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When this is renewed, Paul or, uh, the message translation said, a life renewed from the inside. When Christ gets in and fixes the thing that's driving you to the kitchen, those lusts can't work anymore. That greediness, that desire for more and more, it's gone. It, it, can, it can fade because the issue is solved through him. We make it first a spiritual issue. Then the physical takes care of itself. Yes, again, there are some steps that he will lead us to if the body is fully addicted. That, that is something we can look at. And look at my links below for more information on that. If this is the first video you've seen from me, if not, you probably know that I talk a lot about this. But then he finishes in verse 24, put ye on the new man, which is at, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. After God, he creates that new man in us. Oh, I wanted to read you one more thing. So this is my final point before I put my scriptures away. Um, if you feel like you're out of control, if that verse fits you, please, please don't beat yourself up. Please don't beat yourself up. Sorry, why am I so emotional today? Hmm? We go, we go through a lot. Life is difficult and it seems to be getting more and more difficult lately, doesn't it? It's 2022 when I'm recording this and the last two years have been brutal. So let's not shame ourselves. The binge often, we're just surviving the best we know how to do. And we're not, maybe we're not we're like, well, I'm not getting high and I'm not having an affair and I'm not, uh, food is the healthiest coping mechanism I can find. So I, that is just, Granted, we're just doing the best we can. But when we finally come to ourselves, kind of like the prodigal son, and we come to ourselves and we say, I am stuck in a cycle. I'm out of control. Nothing I have tried has fixed this. I do have a desire for more and more and more, and nothing is fixing it. It's deceitful. It's not working. I need to be renewed from the inside. I need to be renewed from the inside. So to me, the answer to the question, if somebody says, I'm out of control, I don't know what to do, and nothing I'm, I've tried is fixing this, don't start by doing, by throwing yourself into a new program or a new diet or pasting goals on your mirror. That's putting the cart before the horse. <laughs> the first step, I truly believe if this is a spiritual journey, the first step is to ask, to fall on your face before the Lord and ask him, to heal and transform you, to even begin by giving you the desire to even want to take that journey. Sometimes that food has become such a dear thing to us. We have to ask him to even want to give it up. We know may know we need to, but we don't, we don't even want to because it's just, it's just filling that hole enough that the thought of putting it down just feels so bleak. So the prayer may even just begin with such a simple idea as just help me even want to take a step in this direction. Two of my very favorite prayers in scripture, very favorite, are both also in Ephesians. Maybe you know them, but Ephesians 1 has an incredible prayer written by Paul. Um, he says, let's see, I think he offers the prayer, yeah, in verse 16 of, of Ephesians 1. He, he tells the people, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And listen to what he prays. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Here we go. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the, riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. And what are those riches? What's this glory that we get as saints as being his followers? Verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? That's the inheritance. Sorry. That's the inheritance of the saints, of those who are followers, believers in him. It's his power. The exceeding greatness of his power, even great enough to heal food addiction and out of control binging. It is that great. But we've got to start by asking him for it. Let's finish with the prayer in chapter three. This is probably my favorite one of all time. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Stop. 
For this cause, he says in verse 14, Ephesians 3, verse 14, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's what I'm praying for you too. That's what you can pray for yourself. Lord, please strengthen me um, with might by your spirit in my inner man. This is too much. It's too hard. I am out of control. I have been deceived by those lusts. And all I can do is just crave more and more and more. Please strengthen me with might by your spirit in my inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love be, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which paths passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God rather than being filled with food. He's inviting us to be filled with something so much greater. All we have to do is fall down and ask. He'll start the journey. It won't happen overnight. I don't know. Maybe it will. <laughs> maybe it will for you. He's worked those miracles before. Maybe he'll transform you overnight and the cravings will just, whew. it wasn't like that for me. It was a journey and it took, it took months to work through all the issues because it was complex. And that's what my channel and my courses are all about, are working through some of those things. But, but once I finally handed it over and quit trying to stop that out of control train all by myself, everything changed. And, and suddenly there was strength and understanding. Um, those riches began to be poured out on me just because... I asked him and I trusted the journey now to him instead of my limited and faltering willpower. I hope that blesses you today. Get into Ephesians if you want, chapter one, chapter three, chapter four, and listen to him, to Paul, remind all of us that Christ is enough. No matter how hard the journey may be, he is enough and he can heal us. I hope you have a beautiful week.